Hi, my name is Alex Louie. Welcome to my short tutorial on how to access custom properties within individual web forms. I get a lot of questions on how to access the user that's logged in and access their particular properties, specific properties, so that you can write them out on your web form or just do some type of logic in your web form. Now, before you move on with this tutorial, I do suggest that you review my previous tutorial on how to add custom properties to your registration module uh, using the code first approach. I do go into that uh, and this project is just a continuation of that. So as you see here, I've added two new fields which is first name is last name and I can enter in and I can register. So I've already registered and I'm able to log into my account. Now I suppose that in my contact form, in this particular contact form, I only I want to access my identity custom properties here, uh, and that's very very easy. The first thing we need to do is we need to include our imports for the identity classes and the O and middleware. So all you have to do is include the identity namespace and identity O and and then my models that are under my identity models class. So as you see here, let's say here I want to actually access the user that's logged in. So it's very easy to access if somebody is authenticated. So what we could do is you can say if user dot identity dot is authenticated. Okay, and this is accessible through all our web forms. Once we use the authentication piece with ASP.NET identity and web forms. And what I want to do here is get an instance with my object populated to access the individual properties. So what I'm trying to get is the Owen context, which is the cookie middleware. And I'm going to get the application use the application user manager and do find by ID. And I will pass in the current users user ID. So that identity get user ID. Okay. So let me explain to you what's going on here. So what we're doing is we're looking into the actual cookie middleware to get a application user. But we're using the application user manager class because this is a template, a generic they use generic. So if I go to the definition, okay, the application user manager class inherits from user manager user manager has a generic type that you need to pass in of T user and in this particular case we're actually using the application user which we created which we have currently in our old in my previous project application user already comes with the default project in ASP.NET identity web form so if I go in here and I go into the definition that inherits from identity user uh, and this is where I actually added my properties previously. Okay, so you would add additional properties. If we go back to my application user manager, the other thing you'll notice is that it does inherit from user manager, which has all the identity functions. So that's why here I can say find by ID. Why? Because when I inherit from user manager, okay, user manager is a generic class which you put in a user and key part of the identity classes and you will see that you have all the properties accessible to you. So find ID, find by find async and all these functions that you can use. So now if I go back, okay, that's why I can access the find by ID because my application user manager class inherits from user manager, which in sense is template, it's a generic class, which you can pass in a object, which in our case is application user. So in actuality, you can actually override this yourself and create your own user class as long as you can inherit from identity user. So a lot of people do do that. They create their own 
identity class, make it user profile information, and they inherit from identity user. But you would have to change a lot of things in your project, but it's not impossible. So you see here is 17 references. So if I click on this, uh, there is a lot of references to application user. Okay, so that's just a little bit of a, of a tidbit on why this is happening, how this is happening. So once I get my user, I get an instance of my application user object, and that's why here I can say response dot write. Since it's an application user object, if I go back here, now I have these two properties available to me. So I can say uh, hello user dot first name and user dot last name. Okay, and I'm doing all this while I check my and this is wrong here. Okay, while I check if the user is authenticated. So if we run this. First, on first try, because I'm not logged in, it's not going to say hello, user, first name, last name. So all I have to do is I'm going to log in with my part time adjunct at gmail.com. I will log in with my strong password. So now, one, once I'm logged in, now I can go into my contact form. And I'm in my individual contact form, I can say hello, my first name, and my last name which is what I'm accessing here. So a couple of important things that you should realize is that you, sh you do need these namespaces within your individual form. And here you can get an instance of your application user by accessing these functions. So find by ID, you can also do find by email. So, oops, I cannot do this well. I can just stop this. Find by email, okay or find by name. So you have a lot of them accessible to you. Uh, and again, it, this can get a little confusing because again, there's a lot of inheritance going on and generics. So uh, the most simplest way I can put it is that just put in your application user manager class. Um, and again, the Owen is you're querying a cookie middleware to get an instance of the object that's actually logged in and it'll populate it for you. Uh, and this find by ID is using the entity framework to get your actual user object and populate it and put it into user. And now you have all the properties. And why you get an application user is because if you look at application user manager, you have it inherits from user manager, which is using the object application user as your identity object okay uh, and that's it for this short tutorial this is how you do get your properties within your web form now would you do this on every page of course not there are better ways to do this you can actually use a custom page class that you can create and inherit from for every individual web form and you can do all your identity stuff within there uh, so it, there's many ways to do it uh, that's just one of the many ways that it just came to my head. Thanks for listening and for viewing my tutorial, and I hope that this has helped you or helped anyone out there. Thanks.